Good morning. You listen to FloridaLA.net, and I'm Kemp Parr. This morning, my guest is Dan Fireson, who's the chairman with the Dixie Group. Dan, how you doing? Kemp, doing very well. How are you? I'm great. Good to be with you. It's been a couple of weeks for us to get our schedules together, but I wanted to talk to you about your fantastic third quarter results. The top line, your revenue was up 37%. Your earnings were up seven times versus the same quarter last year. Fill in some of the gaps there on your performance. Well, obviously, we were very pleased with our our top line. Our residential products grew over 35%, and our commercial products actually over 40%. So we're really hitting on both cylinders. We still have a ways to go in terms of getting it to the bottom line, and our concentration in the fourth quarter and into next year is going to be improving that profitability as we go forward. You know, we've been watching the whole market from our perspective, and, and, you know, this year the residential market is up probably upper single digits, but the commercial market, from what I hear, is low single digits. So for you to have a 40% increase in the commercial market is very surprising to hear. To what do you attribute that to? Well, candidly, we had underperformed the market about a year or two ago. We did make changes in our management team there, made a number of changes in our offering, and today I have a lot of confidence we will continue to outperform the market. We have a lot of new product, particularly in the modular area, which are performing extremely well in the marketplace. You call out in your conference call a couple of brands. You have Speak and Fit. Talk about what those are. These are new product platforms uh, under which we're introducing a number of new products. Lee Martin and his group have done a good job of developing some new products that really make us very competitive in the marketplace. In addition to that, as you have noted, we introduced our Avant brand and had the very first sales in Avant in the third quarter. Very small sales, but, but we think over the next year or two that will also help us grow our commercial business. Now, when you look at the whole Dixie revenue number, what percentage of is it residential versus commercial? We're about three-fourths residential and, and, and one-fourth commercial. Ideally, we'd like to be more like the industry, which is more like two-thirds, one-third. So we think we have a lot of room to grow on the commercial side, but the problem there is catching up to the residential side because their business is very strong as well. And we've done well with all brands. What we've seen is the upper end of the market really outperforming the rest of the market, except maybe the very low end. But certainly the mid-market, it has outperformed that. We really think that that will continue. The consumer in the higher end market has money and is willing to spend it. And uh, we're seeing the results of that. Really, a good example is with wool which is priced way above nylon or polyester products in the marketplace, and yet our growth there has been dramatic over the last three or four years. Mm-hmm. Actually, I've got to hand it to you. While most of these major mills have focused on the low end, you do have some offerings there with Duracilk, but most of your attention is on the upper end. You have the arrangement with Stainmaster on its True Soft product. Talk a little bit about that whole soft-selling residential carpet and how that's performing? Well, clearly soft has taken over the marketplace, and it's had a major influence on what consumers are buying. And Invista bringing out True Soft, I think, did a wonderful job. they also bringing out their SolarMax slash Pet Protect are also doing an, an excellent job there. It's a good fiber. It's a soft fiber. The True Soft We have seen consumers absolutely flock to that feel. It's happened with other fibers as well in the marketplace. So what it's really meant is if you aren't introducing a lot of new products, your product offering is stale. Mm -hmm. And so our emphasis over the last couple of years has been to introduce a disproportionately large number of new products so that we will be offering what the consumer does want to buy today. And I think that's why we're up so much more than the industry. You know, I need to point out, I think this comes out every now and then when we talk, that Dixie's average selling price, wholesale value, is three times the industry's number, right? Yes. Again, we like playing in the upper end of the business where style, design, color are the important factors, not cost or price. Now, you've been making some serious investments in this business, and I'd like to get into some of that. As we mentioned in the last time I interviewed Kennedy, you had just announced the acquisition of Robotex. Talk about how that fits into your business. 
Robotex is a great acquisition for us. Bob Rothman's done a great job of building a company based on differentiated product. He understands wool well and what can be done with wool from a style and design standpoint. We will be taking the Carousel brand and taking that into our Fabrica offering. The Robotex products over time will be offered through our Maslin wool offering. We think that's the best way for us to approach the marketplace with those products. This expands our wool offering, helps us grow our wool business. And as I mentioned, since we first introduced wool in 2007, we have had 20% plus growth during the whole downturn in the very high-end wool business. That's interesting. To continue on with some of this investment information, I know that you've added yarn capacity, you're adding tufting capacity. We've talked about this color plant that you acquired last year, and and correct me if I'm wrong, you're going to double that capacity coming up in December, is that right? Yes, we are. If you go back, in the last two years, we've added 43% to our yarn capacity. We have put in some new high-speed tufting machines. This year, we have additional machines on order for next year. We did buy ColorMaster in the last quarter of last year. We're currently running at capacity. We will double that capacity or or thereabouts over the Christmas holidays this year by adding drying capacity there. So we're investing to grow the business. We think we're in a position to grow. Not only that, we think the market's going to grow. That's the good news. We're going to have wind our backs for the first time in a long time. That's very bullish and optimistic. Let's delve into that just for a few minutes. So you think that this momentum will continue. Some people are probably wondering, you know, with this government shutdown and some of these releases we've seen on consumer confidence numbers, what has been the effect of this October government shenanigan? Clearly it hadn't been positive for anything, but we don't see it having a major impact. I happened to be in Europe about a month ago, and everybody there was asking about it. I said, just think about it as theater. And if you'll think about it as theater, we'll all be all right. And that's the way it ended up and usually does. When we had our conference call, we made it clear that we have seen no slowdown in orders or sales. And our orders and sales for the first five weeks of fourth quarter are in excess of 30% up. And that's compared to a year ago when the fourth quarter was up 9% over the previous year. So we're seeing business continue strong. I think if you look at the housing numbers, if you look at commercial construction and remodeling, it's going to be good for the industry for a couple of years. That's good to hear. Now, one one little more question I'm just curious about, because it's hard to get a good read on this, but I I know the majority of your business on the residential side is is sold through retailers, but you also supply the home centers. What's going on with the home center business relative to what you're seeing with the specialty retailers? Well, we've seen good growth in both areas. We have been tied more to Invista's products and therefore sell through Lowe's in terms of the big boxes. And Lowe's has done an excellent job of, of featuring Stainmaster, TrueSoft, and SolarMax. And we've seen gr- good growth there, but uh, we've seen the same thing at retail. And it's gratifying to see, but I think if, as long as you develop new products, differentiated, beautiful, well-styled, well-colored product, there's a place in the marketplace for you. All right, one last question. What are we going to see from Dixie at Surfaces in January? A lot of new product. (laughs) That's our MO. Interestingly enough, we had a very good customer visiting this week, and he commented that, you know, nobody else is doing what you're doing in the marketplace in terms of the number of new products, the differentiation of the products. That requires a lot of investment. It, It requires a lot of creative people. But we've been adding salespeople, adding creative people, adding operational people and skills that would enhance our business going forward. So We're offering a lot of new product and expect business to be strong next year. Okay, great, Dan. I appreciate the review, and always good to visit with you again. I've been talking to Dan Frierson, who's the chairman of the Dixie Group, and you've been listening to Kemp and FloorDaily.net.